Okay, hey guys, um, making a video today about uh, being a man again, but this time I'm going to be focusing on not the dysphoria piece, but the the issue that I see with a lot of the identity politics in the trans community around if you identify as a man, then that's it, that's all you need, and that everybody should accept you as that. And the issue I have is there's different dimensions of being a man in my opinion and yes there's the personal um, identity and self-worth uh, part of being a man so if somebody does identify that way and they know in their their brain and their soul that, that that's what they are then it doesn't really matter what the outside world um, tells that person because of their conviction and because of their internal subjective experience of that um, of course, you know, would it be nice if the rest of the world could see that and eventually, you know, some people can see that with, uh, modern medicine allowing for people to, to transition to a certain extent. Um, you know, that, that is nice to have in addition to that. But the issue that I see is we can't expect people to get on board with that when, it's just so, it's, it's hard for even us as trans people to describe or to validate what it is that we're experiencing and what makes it real. And not just that, but what makes it just as real as somebody who was born male and is a man, not just in the self-identity sense or the self-ID sense, but... Um, there's the the other dimensions of being a man are social and um, also physical. So even though I might identify uh, psychologically and I might have that neurological component of feeling physically like a male or like I have a phantom male body, the the reality is that anatomically and physically, I'm not a male, you know, I've gotten closer because of testosterone, but you know, physically, when you look at the, if we're going to be logical about it, if you look at the spectrum or the continuum of males or being a man, um, yes, there's a continuum, but one of those, uh, the obvious, you know, entry into that is number one, being male like 99.9% .9 of the time. And also being a man in the sense of, uh, I would say personality type and temperament. So there's certain um, personality and temperament traits that are more associated with males and masculinity than not. Some of those traits are disagreeability, especially high disagreeability, uh, low neuroticism, um, you know, low anxiety, low emotional instability. And if there is emotional instability, usually it's just anger. It's not, um, you know, expressed in the same way that a lot of women usually express neuroticism. And there's also the um, obvious differences, sex differences with aggression. And so one could argue that the most um, male or the, the males that are the most like a man if we're going to think of it in pure terms, um, when you think of the stereotype of what being a man is, a lot of people will say toxic masculinity or traditional masculinity. But if you, if you, you know, separate all the components out, you realize that is actually, those are hyper-masculine traits that a lot of women don't possess to the same degree and for, for the same amount like of, of consistency. So think of John Wayne. What is the female version of John Wayne? Think of Batman. What's the female version of Batman? Calm, collected, th think of mob bosses. Um, almost to the point of being psychopathic, and that's actually a sex difference too. Um, the majority of serial killers and psychopaths are males. There are some female ones, but it's very, very rare if not. I think I've only seen one example of a female serial killer who had the same amount of aggression, violence, and calculation 
as um, you know the what you see in males. So that right there is, I believe. I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but from what I've um, heard before, is that that's an a expression of very high levels of testosterone. Now, I don't know if it's in utero and also throughout the lifespan for these guys. And also I know it's a brain difference too. Um, that's probably the biggest factor, but I, I, I believe that a lot of the serial killers had pretty high testosterone. So, and you know, I'm going to talk about that in a different video about how testosterone changed me in so many different ways. Um, but you know, so again, on the spectrum of out of all of the males in, in the hierarchy, who is more manly personality wise, I would argue there is a hierarchy and that you could argue that some men are more inherently masculine and more inherently men naturally. Think about uh, the boys from birth that are more aggressive and are more willing to fight and be dominant and bossy and controlling. Um, and a lot of the times those boys will go on to dominate in whatever um, you know, sport they do or in business or, um, you know, they're more obviously boys in that sense than girls. You don't see girls, uh, acting, you know, that aggressive, uh, most of the time. Again, there's always outliers, but so, um, that's one dimension. And then if you want to talk about pure physicality, again, the spectrum of males the more sexually dimorphic a male is, the more actually, it's not that the rest of guys that are males and are, you know, produce sperm and have penises and stuff aren't male. But if we're going to look at the, um, the, the differences and what you see in males where you don't see, there's like no overlap with uh, female, um, you know, sex traits, the extreme male, like physique is, very tall, very broad shoulders, high level of muscularity, um, uh, very small waist. So again, hip to, or waist to shoulder ratio, they call it the, uh, I forget, it's, it's what women find most attractive in men is that ratio. The broader the shoulders and the smaller the waist, the better. I mean, I think there is a point though, it gets a little bit too cartoonish looking, but um, and then also, uh, hand size. This is why guys get made fun of for having small hands and feet because the bigger, um, your hands are the, I believe that's directly correlated or related to grip strength, which is also directly, uh, related to, um, ability to fight well and to, um, also, uh, ha your grip strength determines the amount of muscle that you can put on your body. So, and it's, it's also been linked to longer lifespans. And in our evolutionary past, you know, having these more dominant traits as a male was good because it would help him survive and it would help, um, you know, the women he was uh, reproducing with and, and the children uh, survive as well. So, you know, and if you if you talk to a lot of heterosexual women, they do find, you know, not just height attractive, but they do like men that have bigger hands and feet on average. So that's another big, you know, physical sex difference. Uh, and there's more, obviously there's, okay. So, uh, tall, dark, and handsome. So handsome, obviously most likely refers to, um, you know, jaw, um, jaw size, um, uh, or what is it called? Ah, I can't remember right now, but you know, the very masculine jaw, very masculine skull, you know, protruding brows. I mean, again, you know, it, it can get to a little too extreme where the guy looks like a, a mongoloid or whatever, but, um, some women are really into the, the beast look, um, and, uh, smaller foreheads. Uh, and I think that has to do with just skull shape, um, m bigger features, um, there's also the the dark part of tall, dark, and handsome refers to, you know, hair color. And so the darker the, the hair color, the more that signals maturity. Because if you think about it, um, 
like the lighter the hair color, it's the reverse that signals youth. And I think this is why a lot of women go and get highlights in their hair is because it helps them look more um, youthful or more like bright and bubbly or I don't know. I mean, that's that's my theory. But um, but, you know, there's a lot of kids that are born blonde. And then as you get older, hair tends to get darker over the lifespan. So that's, I think, another reason women are in general more attracted to older men and men that have uh, levels of maturity because again uh, they are probably more stable financially emotionally um, and they have more experience with women they know how to just handle things Um, so anyways I'm just bringing all of this up because you know you can you can identify as a man but it doesn't change the the physical reality um, the so and the social reality of also becoming a man in the dominance hierarchy. So there's the rites of passage that a lot of men historically have gone through and, and still do to some extent today. Um, we've lost a lot of those. I think there's only really more like pseudo initiations, like if you if a guy joins the military, but generally for a masculine man to mature and become psychologically integrated and and to achieve actual manhood he has to go through um overcoming some obstacle and going through like a hero's journey and so you know you could argue that on the spectrum of who's more of a man and who's not would you say a 20 year old you know young man that is living in his mom's basement and hasn't really gone out into the, into the world and challenged himself is just as much of a man socially as somebody who went to war or who, you know, already went through his own version of um, the hero's journey. So, you know, and this is, this is what kind of um, I, I get frustrated about in the trans community is this isn't really talked about. It's almost seen as like this is just... Um, it's not real that in order to, to, to be a man that you don't need to go through all of these things and you don't need to prove yourself to other men or to women. And I think it's both. I think, I think you should know who you are on the inside and you should do what you are aligned to do in this life. But if you want to be there's still social contracts and there's still, we still live in the world with other people and we can't just make up the rules independent of the majority of the population. It may fly within our community, but it's not going to fly in the the majority of the world right now, unless the entire culture changes. And I know that that's um, one of the, I think main focuses of trans activists in particular is that they want to convince society that these gender roles are antiquated and meaningless and that we should just you know focus on our individual identities and 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 i just i don't agree i don't think that's um i don't think that's gonna work i don't think it's reasonable and i don't think the majority of of people want that i think that a lot of men are born naturally masculine or on that spectrum and they want to pursue living a life that challenges them and that helps them develop to their full potential and um you know attract mates um and have children and and do you know there's nothing wrong it's completely natural it's how we reproduce the species um so you know do i think that maybe some of the the man box could be relaxed in certain areas. Yeah, but I don't think it, we can't completely get rid of it. It it just, it makes everything meaningless if we're going to say anybody can be a man. Um, so I don't know if I explained that well. Um, I just kind of, you know, was able to separate that out for myself this morning, responding to a subscriber about it. Um, but you know, I'm well aware that, I, I know I look I would look stupid if I said that I was more of a man than some of the guys that I work with out here. It's just not true. Um, but that doesn't invalidate my own personal relationship and identity with myself and 
and how I want to develop my masculinity further. So, um, I guess, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to say right now because it's getting, getting a little long, but I'm super curious to hear what y'all think about this topic. And, um, you know, and I've thought also like, it's been really interesting to hear in the comments from gay men about this subject because a lot of the, um, talk around rites of passage and, um, the hero's journey, uh, comes mainly from a heterosexual male perspective. So it's been really interesting to see that even gay men, masculine gay men have this natural inclination or desire to go through. Cause one of the, the arguments is that women naturally go through an initiation because their bodies change and develop the capacity to carry children. And so that is a biological initiation into, um, womanhood. And of course, yes, can a woman still be immature and able to produce children? Yes. But I think that there's more of a direct connection between female biology and mature, uh, like a mature, uh, identity as a woman. And, and, you know, for the women in the comments, I'm, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, respond with your experience with this in particular, but, you know, for men, uh, testosterone, if they don't have specifically older, mature men, masculine men to help show them how to manage those aggressive urges and tendencies and to channel that into pro-social means, um, a lot of young men become destructive and end up joining gangs or, you know, just taking out that aggression in harmful ways. So, you know, it's important to have these, these structures in place. And I believe it's important for trans men too, you know, cause we, we, with taking testosterone, um, I don't know. I feel like there's probably a lot of trans guys that maybe repress their aggression. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Do you feel like with the changes with, with T that you had to do that? Because Again, in my opinion, masculinity and aggression is not okay within the mainstream trans community. It's not really talked about. Um, it's talked about as far as, you know, that's what a lot of cis or bio men uh, deal with. But when it comes to trans men, we're supposed to be shining examples of the new modern type of man or ma masculinity where we're more soft and sensitive and integrated and all of those things. And I don't necessarily agree with that either. Um, so anyways, I'll go more into this subject, I'm sure in the future, but I just wanted to get, get a video up and, uh, get some more conversation started. So, all right, I'm going to hit the road. I'm in, I'm still in Wyoming. I'm headed, heading back to the East coast to Virginia. Um, there's some good views right now, but it's kind of wonky weather. So I couldn't really capture it, but maybe I'll try to put some footage like at the end of this video or end of the next video for you guys. So. All right. You guys have a good night. Talk to you soon and feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment and have a good night. Peace.